on a chilly Tuesday evening in the Elm City. Yale Bulldogs are coming off of their 17th straight home victory this past weekend as they beat the University of Delaware Blue Hens. But now it's a new challenge and a familiar foe as tonight they take on Central Connecticut State in one of their final tune-ups before they head to Ivy League play. And a pleasant good evening. My name is J.J. Duke and alongside me is James Vidas. And James, in that game against Udell on this past weekend, it was a strong play of Anthony Dahlier running both the point and shooting from beyond the arc that got the job done. Yeah, 13 points for a match to season high with three three-pointers. He was asked to step up this year as a senior captain after the injury to point guard Makai Mason, and he's done a great job at it, averaging more than four assists per game, leading the team, a real stabilizing force for this Bulldog team. Well, he's going to be running the offense against Central Connecticut tonight. Comes into this one at 2-6 and six overall on the year. They're led by first-year head coach and former NBA veteran Danielle Marshall. More on that a little bit later as we'll have his story. The far side, Oney dribble drive kick back open to a wide open. Dallier and he strokes that one in. Burke from distance. Got it! At one or two or maybe three seed. Eight seconds left on the shot clock and Oney with an emphatic block down low against Chris Williams. Lassane. Draws the double team to Jesus, strong to the hole, and he finishes. Steering a Bruner, a wild take, but a great back tip by Reynolds. And he'll reset quickly back underneath and throwing that one down is Jordan Bruner. If you don't succeed, try, try again. And Yale cashing in. Kane Jr. twisting his way through the lane, got it. Not the finish that Ortlip would have liked. Now Yale pushing, Munzer spotting, got it. Well, Yale are on a 10-2 run right now, spanning over the last couple of minutes of the third quarter. And they've gotten this one into a ball game here as you take a look at the last couple of sequences. First, it was Elena Munzer from distance. Then after a stoppage, Marianne Santucci at the buzzer got it to go on Yale. Trail Boston College, 51-43. J.J. Duke and James Badanos here courtside with you. And James, maybe that's what the Bulldogs need to find themselves into this game. And close the gap even further. Yeah, just a critical final two minutes, getting that 10 to two run. BC helping Yale out, sending them to the free throw line. Eventually, Jen Berkowitz hitting a couple. Yale was struggling, two for eight now, a more, more respectable seven for, for 14. Five of those last six went down for Yale. And then a bit of a careless turnover down the stretch for Boston College, and just not a great way to head into this fourth. All of a sudden, you've given the Bulldogs a reason to think, hey, we have, we have a chance to be in this game, and we're right here. It's a reason for belief, and sometimes in sports, that's all you need is a reason for some belief, especially at home. Yale will take advantage of it. They will start the quarter with possession, a chance maybe even to cut it to two possessions here. And with Munzer and Simpson both out on the court, big threes in those last couple of minutes. <laughs> that's going to play a role. And look at Munzer going right at the basket. If you could get the confidence from those players, it helps everyone out on the floor, especially Jen Berkowitz, who's had her hands full down low. Well, Lena Munzer, 27 points in the victory against Albany on Sunday. It's been kind of a slower start this evening, but getting her name on the score sheet more over the last couple minutes has now bumped it into double digits. Marty Mazzetti. Sat at a large portion of that third quarter. Fasula putting that one off the mark. Now Yale looking to run. This might be where they can stretch BC. Get transition points. And really the last domino to fall in terms of getting this Yale offense going might be Megan McIntyre. Even Santucci got in there at the end. The big basket. So all five players in there. Good open look for Simpson. And just like that. Confidence is contagious. Big three-pointer for Simpson. That is absolutely massive for Tamara Simpson and a stoppage underneath. It has looked like Emma Guy took contact there. And I'm curious to see if they're going to take a look at this one, whether it's a three or it's a two. No, the referee's just coming over and stopping things for just a moment, maybe perhaps a delay a game or anything. But Simpson knocking that basket down. Now Yale back to within a one-possession ball game, and we're just into the fourth quarter. It's now dating back over the last 320. Yale are out to a 15 to two run. And just going back to Boston College this year is guy dealing with some contact issues there. Close games this year just have not gone Boston College's way. Every game decided by single digits, the Eagles have lost. 
You know, obviously riding this hot win streak entering tonight. Perhaps a little bit of magic here in this fourth quarter. Yale perfect at home thus far in the season at 3-0, a foul underneath, trying to make it 4-0 again before the Bulldogs go back on the road for six straight. They're just chipping at the lead. Foul goes against Santucci, that's her second, so Mazzetti on the inbounds. I mean, if you're Boston College, you want to try to get Fasula the ball once more. That time, Simpson gambled. It's what she does, but when it doesn't work out, it usually leads into a pretty good look, and that time, Boston College was easy, too. And Georgia Pinot getting that one off the window, so BC stopping things momentarily, though McIntyre thought about calling her number. Simpson again from distance, in and out, but that was a great look, though, from Tamara Simpson. Yeah, a lot of confidence in that stroke. No hesitation, just didn't fall that time, but we hope to see her continue to take those looks if they're open. Mazzetti, far side with Edwards, looking to go back down the blocks, but Fasula ran into contact, nothing called over. Simpson, McIntyre from distance, back are no good, but a strong offensive rebound by Simpson, and a foul goes, and Yale have had two golden looks from distance, however, great aggression and composure by Simpson to hang on to that one and draw the contact. Her last basket, by the way, got her into double digits, so now three Yale players, 10 plus. And how about on that turnover, Santucci coming over, bringing the double team. It was almost muscle memory for Fasula looking to make one of those coveted uh, shovel passes she's made a couple times tonight. And Simpson going right back at it, and when she gets it going, it's a streaky situation, and there, big basket. Up to 12 points for her. So Tamara Simpson averages 11 and a half points per game. She scored the bulk of her 12 in the last few minutes in her own right. Berkowitz still picking up the foul. However, that is her that is her fourth. That's a big call right there. As Berkowitz, give her credit, she's hung onto the floor this long without picking up that fourth, but she'll have to step aside. And now Megan Gorman, she's going to be charged with the task of guarding Mariella Fasula. Yeah, interesting decisions upcoming for both Coach Guth and Eric Johnson of Boston College. You have a couple coveted forwards with four fouls on the bench. Luckily for Boston College, a little bit more depth than Yale has to work with, so perhaps expect, expect Berkowitz to come in in a couple minutes, but she's going to have to play smart. So Hughes gets that one off the window. BC re-ups their lead by five. If you're Yale right now, you don't have to settle for the jump shot. Getting to the lane, not too bad of a decision either. But now the dynamic does change with Berkowitz off the floor. And that's an offensive foul. The referee had that one spotted all the way as Munzer out of control. Going down low, taking the charge was Kaylee Edwards. And that's where that veteran leadership comes into play. Edwards, a grad student, doesn't do a whole lot of scoring. Averages around four and a half points per game. But taking one for the team right there. And already that's Yale's third foul of the quarter. And yeah, some well-deserved rest for Edwards. She'll head off the court. But that time, Gorman entering for Berkowitz. And Gorman's game isn't necessarily a post-up game, especially with this matchup with Fasula. So that time, there's a little bit of separation there, and it just changes the spacing on the floor. You know, Munzer trying to create on her own. Not the best situation, and you know, I was going to have to get some stops here down the stretch. So Mozeni will rework the offense, and Pinot, curious if BC go quickly back down into the mixer. A real battle between both Fasula and Gorman, and they go right there as Fasula puts that one in. Mariella Fasula now with 16 points at 8 of 12 shooting. And Gorman did the best she could there, but Fasula just kept working. Give her credit. It was a good matchup down there, but once you get the entry pass in there, it's so hard to stop her. Simpson a wild take. No good. Gorman right there. Loses contact to the ball. And now Munzer. Yale resets, Simpson wide open, the corner, back iron no good. And Yale starting to force it a little bit. BC on a mini run in their own right, have run off the last five points without any response. They can re-up their lead with the made basket from distance at double digits. Pinot with a great seal underneath by Fasula. And they've re up to nine. And I think Yale needs to use a timeout. They do exactly that. And it's going to be a full timeout, which will bring us to a media stoppage as well with 5.52 to go. We'll step aside. You're watching 
Boston College, Yale, here on the Ivy League Digital Network and ESPN3.